Hi. In this set, we are given that uh, the two plots, these are the two plots below show data of four companies A, B, C, D over the three years 2019, 20 and 21. The first plot shows the revenues and cost incurred by the company during these years. For example, in 2021, in 2021 company C, so in 2021 company C earned 100 crores, this is the revenue and it incurred a cost of between 20 and 40, exactly between this, so 30 crores. So a revenue of 100 and a cost of 30, that means the profit will be 100 minus 30, which is 70. Okay, this is how we need to read this data. And the next chart basically gives us the employee strength versus the new hires. So for example, if you consider company B had in 2021, so B in 2021 had 250 employees at the start of the year and 30 of them joined, 30 new employees joined. So 250 plus 30 is 280. Okay, so there will be 280 employees at the end of the year. Fine. So now let us look at the questions. The first question is, considering all three years, which company had the highest annual profit? Okay, so we have to calculate total annual profit of each of these companies. Fine. Okay, so let's consider 2019. Okay, 2019 is this, this, this and this. For company A, we have a revenue of 90. Cost is approximately 85, not exactly 90, but approximately 85. Hence, the profit will be 5. For B, the revenue is 100. The costing is again approximately not exactly 70, but between 70 and 80, so 85. So, profit will be 15. For C, the revenue is approximately again 25, the costing is 20 and hence the profit comes out to be 25 minus 25. For D, it is revenue is 50 and the cost is 40. So 50 minus 40, which is going to be 10. Uh, I made a mistake here. This should be the costing for B should be between 70 and 80 which will be 75 and not 85. This should be 75, this should be 25. Okay, then you have 25, 20 and then you have 50, 40, 10. Similarly, doing it for uh, 2020 now. So for 2020, we have these uh, yellow um, square boxes. So let's start with A. A's revenue is 90 and the costing is 65. So 90 minus 65 is profit of 25. Then for B, we have revenue of 90 and the cost of 40. So 90 minus 40 profit of 50. For C, we have a revenue of 70 and the costing of 60. So 70 minus 60 is 10, right? Then you have for B, so D, the revenue is 20 and the cost is 50. So 20 minus 50, that means a loss of 30. So we have a loss for D in 2020. Now doing the same for 2021, 2021 starting with A, revenue 60 and the cost of 30. So 60 minus 30 profit of 30 here, right? Then you have for B, Revenue is 30 and the cost is also 30. So profit is effectively zero. No profit, no loss here. For C in 2021, profit is sorry, revenue is 100 and the cost is 30. So 100 minus 30, hence a profit of 70. And finally, for D in 2021, revenue is 70 and the cost is also 70, right? So you have 70 minus 70, again no profit, no loss for D as well. So for both B and D, no profit, no loss in 2021. Now let us look at the questions. The first question was considering all three years, which company had the highest annual profit? Okay. 
so considering all three years for so profit for a was 5 25 and 30 so total profit will be 5 plus 25 30 30 plus 30 is 60 for b it's 25 plus 50 75 plus 0 75 for C, it's 5 plus 10, 15, 15 plus 70 is 85. And for D, it's 10 minus 30 minus 20 plus 0 is minus 20. So the highest profit is for option company C, option B. Okay. Next question, which of the four companies experience the highest annual loss in any of the years? So in any of the years, we know highest annual loss is there's only one loss actually. So that has to be the highest so it's going to be company d option c okay it's for company d and finally uh, in this third question of the set the ratio of company's annual profit okay profit to its annual cost is a measure of its performance so performance is profit upon cost right which of the four companies had the lowest value for this ratio in 2019 okay so you have to calculate for 2019 for A, B, C and D this ratio, ratio of profit upon cost. So in 2019 profit is 5 for A and the cost is uh, 85. So 5 upon 85 which is effectively 1 by 17. For B it's going to be 25 is to 75. 25 by 75 is 1 by 3. For C it's 5 by 20, 5 by 20 is 1 by 4. And for D, it's going to be 10 by 40. 10 by 40 is going to be 1 by 4. So these are the performance ratios for all these three companies, right? And you can see the ratio is least for company A. 1 by 17 is the least of all these ratios. Hence, the answer here is option D, 1, company A. Now, moving on to the next uh, question. The total number of employees lost in 2019 and 20 was the least for which company? Okay, so here again you'll have to uh, sort of uh, look at the data and see how many employees are leaving in 19 and see how many employees are leaving in 20 and then calculate the required answer. So let's start with 2019. So in 2019 company A had 150 employees and 20 new hires joined. So 150 were there initially and 20 hired. So there must should have been 170 employees at the end of the year 2019. But obviously some of them must have left, right? So, so for company A in 2020, uh, where is A in 2020 here? The number of employees is approximately 140 at the beginning of 2020, right? So if all 20 joined and no one left, Number of employees here must have been 170, right? Because there are 170 employees because of these 20 employees joining. And if no one left, there should have been 170 employees at the starting of 2020. But no, there are 140. So what this effectively means is that 170 minus 30 is 140. So 30 employees left in 2019. Okay. So, and continuing the same thing for A, 140 employees were there in 2020 for company A and approximately 35 joined. So, 140 plus 35 is 175. So, if no one left in 2020, there should have been 175 employees at the end of 2020 and hence there should have been 175 employees at the beginning of 2021. But at the beginning of 2021, there are 150 employees in A. So what this effectively means is that 25 employees left in 2020 for company for company A, right? So in 2019, this is for 2019 and this is for 2020. So for company A, 30 and 25, that is 55 employees left the company in 2019 and 2020. Same we can do for B. So for A, B, C and D. For B, there were 210 employees at the starting and 35 joined. So there must have been 245 employees at the end of 19. And if no one left, there must have been, there should have been 245 employees at the beginning of 2020. But there are only 240. So what this means is that 5 employees left in 2019 for B. Similarly, 35 left in 
2020. So company B total 40 employees left including both the years. For company A 55 left. Similarly for company C 45 and 40. 85 people left. Uh, there is a error here. 400 plus 30 should be 430 and not 470. So this should be 430 minus 20. So for company D 20 and then here it's 45, 445 right. So total 20 plus 40, 65 left for company D from company D. So the total employees left is least for which company? It is least for company B. Hence the answer is option A. Moving on to the last question here. In this question we have profit per employee is the ratio of a company's profit to its employee strength. Okay, profit to employee strength. For this purpose the employee strength in a year is the average of the employee strength at the beginning of that year and the beginning of next year. In 2020 which of the four companies had the highest profit per employee. Okay. So let's calculate for A, B, C and D the profit ratio per uh, employee strength. Take it. So this is what we want for us. Uh, we want it for 2020. So in 2020, what is the profit of A? Let's start with A. So profit of A is, uh, where is A in 2020? In 2020, this is here. So revenue is 90 and the cost is 65. So 90 minus 65 is 25. Profit is 25 in 2019. Or what we can do is we can check profit from here as well for A, B and C in 2020. 25, 50, 10 and minus 30. So 25, 50, 10 and minus 30. These are the profits for each of these four companies. And employee strength is the average of employee strength at the beginning of that year and the beginning of next year. So for example, employee strength for A will be the employee strength at the beginning of 2020, which is effectively not this one, sorry, employees are here. So 140 and if employee strength at the beginning of next year is 150. So average of 140 and 150, which comes out to be 145. So this is the ratio for A, right? Similarly for B, uh, employees at the beginning of 2020 is 240 and uh, at the beginning of 2021 is 240, 250. So average of 240 and 250 is 245. For company C, uh, this is going to be okay see at the beginning of 2020 and at the beginning of 2021 the employees are the same 325 so the average will be 325 only and for company d since we want the highest ratio right highest profit per employee let's not even bother for company d because company d is earning a loss so its ratio comes out to be negative. So let's not even bother about it. So let's simplify for A, B, C. This goes by 5, 5 times. This goes by 5, uh, uh, 29 times. This ratio simplified effectively becomes 10 by 49, right? This ratio or actually do one thing. Let all the ratios be, to compare the ratios, we need the same either numerator or same denominator. So let's make numerator of all 10. So this divided by 10, 5 is 49 and this divided by 5 is 5 by 29 and multiply it with 2. So this becomes 10 by 58. Okay. So these are the ratios for A, B and C. And we want the highest profit per employee. Now the ratio will be highest since the numerators are same for all these three ratios. The ratio will be highest when the denominator is least, right? So the ratio will be highest for company B. Option A is the right answer here. So that's it for the set. Thank you.